edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place, PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line advertising. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the awesome cast live from PodCamp Pittsburgh 8. Again, this is the this is the the podcast, the show, the video cast. I don't know, we can call it any of that, netcast kind of stuff. Uh, awesome. where we talk geek, we talk nerd, we talk we talk social media, we talk technology, anything we kind of fancy, and it's kind of a it's kind of my mic not working there. What's going on there? Is that a pun? Your mic not working? Hold on. Hold on. Maybe we have to start over. I don't know. I can't do that all again. We're going to redo that. No, we're not. No, we're fine. We're fine. I know it's on here. Um, so we're here at PodCamp where we're talking social media and everything. Um, so what better way to talk about social media, podcasting, kind of like where we started with this stuff by, you know, having a podcast. We've done, done this for several years. Joining me right now is Mike Munns up here in the chair. How you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. You guys are looking for me. My name's at DeMunns on Twitter. You can find all my rants and raves there. Okay. I just want to point out to start that there's two mics on two mics. There's two mics on two mics, yes. This could get interesting fast. Yes, yes. So um, just, you know, kind of as a, you know, what are we doing for people in the audience? You know, uh, really what we have going on here, um, I have, you can see behind me on the main cam, if you guys are on video, I, the people out there later, um, we got a big TV here showing off. Uh, we have Wirecast going on, and I'll show you guys on the camera at home, we have kind of a mini version of... There you go with your your pixie sticks. This is magic you, SEO magic, dust. Magic SEO dust. Yes. As a matter of fact, if you were in my session today, you learned how to use this properly. You open it and dump it all over your keyboard, and it automatically gets you to the top ranking for keywords. I can't wait to watch back to that one. Um, but we're showing off. You guys can see the the wire cast like we do in the studio every week. We don't have as much going on because we don't have anybody chiming in remotely. But we have like a 2009 laptop here, so we can only do so much months. I understand. I understand. And, you know, uh, it's oftentimes you don't get a lot of people chiming in remotely because your 2002 or 9 laptop really doesn't reach out to them correctly. Exactly. I mean, I'd be available for you any day of the week. Mike on Mics is one of my favorite shows. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, we're lacking accordions this year, but I think we can make up for it with banter. I understand the accordion is coming um, to the post show. That would be awesome. I mean, we might even have to drag the second segment of Awesome Cast to the show to let people know and feel the power of the accordion. Yes. So you had a session earlier today. You told us about your magic pixie dust. So what did you talk about? It was SEO dust. And, and to, to kind of summarize it, what I was really trying to do was influence people's minds to work differently when they were trying to think about things to do for search engine optimization. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, more reason I use the, the pixie dust is because a lot of people were coming in to try to get a, the fix-all, do-all recipe. They wanted to you know, learn how to get themselves to the top automatically. Mm -hmm. So I figured for those people, I'll, I'll appease them by bringing them some magic dust for their computers. But the other people that want to take a second and learn and get an idea of the mindset behind getting yourself found online was really a, a, a refreshing time to, to, to see a couple of lights going off in the audience of people realizing some new things that I brought up. And there were some old people in the audience that realized some, some older stuff that they may be utilizing too. So it was a, altogether a, a, a eclectic crowd. There was a, a vast demographic of male, female, age groups. Mm -hmm. I had a good time. I think we even saw a couple farm animals in there. <laughs> There's a really. I just threw off my next question. Um, there was a. I, I listened to your podcast. You did it with both of us. We did uh, pre -pod camp yeah. podcasts yeah, we that did. were up on the site. Um, I, you really echo something that I've been talking about because like, I'm not as into the SEO part, like understanding exactly how all that goes with the keywords and how does that work with the Google juice and everything. And but I know you emulated, and it was good hearing something from somebody I know who knows that stuff. Don't don't. I don't need SEO dust on my oh. soundboard. Okay. I, uh, that's that's not going to work. It's not connected to the internet, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, but no, with the idea uh, about um, you know just creating content really helps with that SEO side, and that's why Absolutely. I said you know get a blog, tweet, make sure your name's attached to all this stuff. I know you talk about the, the Google Plus yes. integration and everything, so it was nice to uh, uh, kind of see like that is that is the ideal strategy to 
you know, especially with the Google Plus integrations and everything. And the, the takeaway I really hope for people to get from that is that you don't have to have a dissertation of 15 paragraphs to get content published. Mm -hmm. You can do something as simple as 140 characters, but you need to have it. So I think, you know, getting that out there and, and getting people's minds at ease about what's considered content and what's an acceptable amount of content is going to help to break that threshold, that bottleneck where people seem to find themselves in writer's block or I don't know what to talk about. Talk about stuff that you think your audience is looking for. Talk about questions that you think they may want to answer. Talk about reviews of products or services that you had. So really don't pigeonhole yourself into trying to re remake the wheel for your website. Mm -hmm. Find little anecdotes because it's a lot simpler to bite off a, a sentence or two versus a, a five paragraph. And the other, it's, and you also echo this uh, this idea, like you know, with your clients, trying to get them to generate content too. Because I mean, sometimes so I know you work with you work with lawyers. I work yes. with like some doctors and stuff. So it's hard for me to echo their knowledge and their passion you know? is, is you oh, yeah. can't mimic it at all the, they got into the business that they're in for a reason and sometimes that's transparent when we write it because we're writing for another uh, idea or another entity but when the person's trying to share their passion and why they got into something that bleeds through the, the content and that's really what gives you usable content because ultimately you can write for a search engine all you want but if no one looks at it it's not very viable it's not yeah. very useful to you so write for your audience what they need and that's where I think the the transparency of the passion leads through. Mm -hmm. So getting your business owners to just give you something. I, I push them to give me a couple paragraphs and they don't realize it, but I mince those paragraphs up into three to four posts and they feel like they've donated a lot. They feel like they've contributed so much. Yeah. Yeah. Especially something like that. You know, I, I, I've, I know for me, I've been reworking a lot of content we've had and, and making them, uh, maybe we take an old blog post. I put a nice big picture up there for Facebook, Google plus because yeah. the pictures are what drives it. Uh, but then I have the content there. Now there's something that's searchable attached to that picture. Exactly. And we talk about a lot of metadata stuff. You got me putting my metadata in, in, my, in these podcasts and everything. I don't it's know important. exactly what's picking up on it, but it's there. And actually I remember I did do a switch, uh, a search a couple days ago and I I think it was even a search on my computer just looking for a certain, you know, a certain keyword or something I knew we did with a podcast. And I was surprised to find like MP3s coming up, you know, for that were just said awesome cast 53 or something. And then there it was. I think I was looking for old, old, old content for Google Glass for my talk later today um, and realizing that 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 is, you know, at least computer level, that is something listening to that that part of it. The devil is in the details when it comes to files like that. The, shame on you if you name your header tag header image number one mm -hmm. or if you let your audio cast get dated as its title. You should fill every opportunity you have to give something a unique and, and content specific title as you as you can control because there's so much out of your control. Mm -hmm. So what else, uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of odd because we're right in the middle of the only day of PodCamp this year. So it's kind of hard to get a, a kind of wide view of what the conversation is this year uh, at this point at least. Uh, uh, so we've had the morning. I don't know if you attended any other sessions or parts of sessions or have you have any good conversations lately? Like what seems to be, uh, what is, what's the questions getting asked? What do you think like the conversation is this year around social media? I, I see a lot of people trying to pick and choose from different apps and different pieces of, of digital service. You know, one thing I brought up in my class was Vine versus Instagram video. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? So I think there's a, a, this year I hear a lot of overwhelmed people trying to, you know, pick through the sandbox and find that, that one piece of technology that's applicable to their need and that they're comfortable with. And I, I think this year we're going to start to find a lot more, and it goes back to last year's title, your digital toolbox. People yep. are going to get a lot more familiar and a lot more specialized with some of their digital tools as the tool begins to evolve itself. You're going to find there's going to be winners in the tool world and there's losers in the tool world. So really, uh, whereas, you know, we say it's so easy to start, you just have to start and pick something. Something now, better than nothing. Now right? it's, now the problem is we have too many somethings to do. Oh, How it's do you definitely it? an overwhelm. So. You're, you're just so many different apps and services you're inundated with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. What's the difference in them? And I, I assimilated it to a car. You know, you buy a Honda, you buy a Toyota. What's the difference? Well, there's some usability, some function. I like the color. I don't, I don't really know how I can tell people to choose one from the other without trying them. But what I can tell people is it's important to use all of them to find out. Mm -hmm. So don't a little or or negate something that you may not be comfortable with without trying it first. And, and even mm -hmm. at that point, I, I still pitch. Leave your name underneath that stone because you don't know when somebody's going to go to Instagram if you're a yep. Vine guy or yep. vice versa. Yep. I, I was, nobody was using Google Plus a year ago, but I'm glad that I put my clients and my properties under Google Plus, and now we're finding how people are applying to it with the Google Hangouts, with the conversations, and we're there, and, and people are finding us in, in certain instances. It's like seed really technology. 
Now I now you 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 have the you know try everything now. now so a lot of times I'm having conversations with people that are just need to take that first step. Now I kind of go, yes, there's a lot to do it. You don't need to do all of it now. Start somewhere. Pick one, go with it, see how it goes. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, I I think that's where a lot of PodCamp even started with even the term podcast is the simplicity behind an audio file. Mm-hmm. Your phone can do it. There's actually a boss jock is in, in-house today. And Next door doing a session about exactly. exactly how to do this. And they're a really good tool to use to get you introduced to mm-hmm. podcasting. But even simpler than that, you can use your voice recorder. Exactly. There was somebody who was saying uh, about doing video. I think I was talking with somebody last night. I talked to somebody else earlier in this week. And they were like, you know, you can just go to YouTube and where – hit upload and on the right there say use your webcam and record that's all you need to do Simple. just to start something have a conversation even do it a couple of times and don't tell anybody about it just to get used to it you know what do they say kiss keep it simple stupid make it yeah. easy for yourself you exactly know? don't see there's, there's a bird there's no technological you know hurdle in front of you all these things are things you use on a daily basis you're talking to your phone when you talk to somebody you snap selfies you take pictures of random things all those are forms of social media and you do it inadvertently mm. Now, if you take that information in those files and you channel them to something, now you're starting to optimize that social media for whatever you need it for to reach and influence an audience anywhere. Exactly. Exactly. Anything else? I'm just really excited to PodCamp, you know, is here. And I like being in the middle of it this year. It's pretty fun. There was a, a lot a lot better of a vibe this year, I think. A lot of uh, I heard a lot of uh, naysayers at the beginning think that there might have been a little bit of a, a slump this year, and I don't, I don't think that occurred at all. I think what we're going to see is this is going to be one of the more productive pod camps. Yeah. I think even this is – I'd even call it maybe a, a sophomore or junior level pod camp because a lot of the same faces are here. When people came back say, hey, I used what you told me. I've gotten to this part. Now what? And so I like that. And there's some more advanced topics. Um, there was uh, – I know P-Dutters were doing uh, a, 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 a content kind of generation one like based on what he's doing on the government i was in there uh, just playing with the hangout and they were talking about the fold game okay. that's uh, about uh 40 molecules you know but it's a game so they get people to do it and they're making them do the computational stuff you know uh, you know without really knowing they're they're doing it you know um like really cool concepts like that and that was the only snippet i got out of there but like, there's a lot of high level stuff they're going to talk about nsa next session yeah right you know which i guess that is a big thing because we are putting all this content out there but, you know, we know what I thought about, you know, hey, they're going to take all the content and sift through it, you know, but they have yeah. the choice. And then, you know, even talking about that NSA, I brought it up in my session that Google has done a complete secure search at this point. Yeah. Anything you do on Google can't be tracked. Yeah. They will not share the information. So anonymity is becoming almost like a staple at this point because of things like the NSA. Which is funny versus something like, you know, our public personas we talk about here with like Twitter and Facebook. Absolutely. And it, it's kind of counterproductive, but at the same time, I'm glad. Mm-hmm. Protect me, please. Yeah, you should be thinking about it other way. What is public? What is private? Do, am, I, am I putting too much out there? For sure. So, Absolutely. Excellent. So where do people find you? Uh, I'm at Demuns on Twitter. For those of you looking for me on Facebook, you'll have to Twitter me to get my Facebook handle. I work for a law firm downtown, and I'm usually at Piper's on Thursdays, so stop by and see me. <laughs> there you go. Work in the door, right? Yeah, work in the door and the bar. There you go. Thanks. So give it up for months. Awesome cast. All right, Chachi, let's have you come up next here. And I know you have a friend that you're bringing with you. So let's see what this is about. Um, oh, by the way, thanks thanks to our awesome drawing here. Where's your Twitter? At chance underscore second. Go check them out. Great stuff. I always tweet some really awesome drawings and stuff throughout the day. Um, I know that gets me through the day there. Uh, so we have with us Chachi. Now, you're not alone. You hear here, you're back at pocket. Whoa, there you go. Chachi applause. Woo! You, you paid all those guys while we were waiting on what months, right? Yeah, I'm broke yeah. now. You're broke now? Yeah. I got your magic SEO pixie dust in your ear. I do. So I see that. So. I, someone handed it to me, and it wasn't months. Oh, they're all dealing it out it in the hallways months. now. I don't know. So so um, so you're back at Pod Camp and you have you have a friend. I it's do. off camera here. What what did you find? <laughs> I found a cube. We're here at Point Park. <laughs> you found a companion cube. It looks yeah, like. It's, it's Look from, at this thing. Audio. It, we'll, we'll, we'll put some pictures up or something. Apparently, someone tried to make a giant die, and only the one and six are numbered. So. So that somebody is trying to make the most awesome version of D and D. Yeah, but it's terrible. <laughs> well, you saw me roll. I rolled it before we started, and it didn't really roll. Yeah, it kind of just slid. So you're around. Now, now it's my foot rest. So you're around. You're you're 
dip I it agree. into a few different sessions. I I'll, dipped into I'll, one of them. You dipped into one <laughs> yeah. left. I, no, but yeah, but what have you but, but you you've been hearing a lot of the conversation too. What what have you been hearing? I'm not allowed to talk about You're it. You're not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> I don't have anything good to say. I, and, no, and that's based on the two sessions that I've been in long enough to hear a sentence and then I left. Okay. Okay. So I am I, – no. They weren't for me, so I used my – All uh, right. So well, we talked about – I used and, my feet. And we I talked left. about before like what you're doing for social media and like how, what your goal is for that. Do you want to import some of that wisdom on this audience here at PodCamp? No. How do you use social media? <laughs> how do you use social media? I use social media to be me. Okay. And that translates into everything else I do. Everything I do is all branded Chachi. You are your brand. Yeah. Yeah. It's not – It's not. I'm not trying to sell you anything except for – One time I, One time I, a year. Yeah, one time a year when I actually so, am so trying to sell you So basically all through the year, you're Chachi. You try to be entertaining. You try it's, to be yourself. It's my demeanor and my attitude that people are after. It's not – me trying to push a product. Okay. Okay. But I, you I, but you help out a lot. You retweet a lot of stuff. Yeah, I, I'll push other people, mm -hmm. but I'm not I'm not here to sell anyone anything. Mm -hmm. Except for the one time a year where I'm here to sell you something. Which is Chachi Plays. Okay. And how and, and tell tell everybody how that how that goes. Uh, that is done one hundred percent purely through social media. As far as the people that donate and yeah. everything. I, mean, I I send out messages asking for money and people give me money. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. There's no face-to-face -face interaction. It's all except for we have everybody come down to Tuzium, and we have a pretty good party throughout the right. two days. Yes. So, um, all right. And how well have you done with that? Uh, Ten thousand dollars in three years. In three years, and we're yeah. doing it again. What April? March. April. March. April I ish. I don't know yet. <laughs> it's October. All right. All right. Normally, we don't start planning Chachi plays <coughs> until November, mm -hmm. and it's in Jan in February. So. All right, so uh, I'm going to get Sean up here. Everybody, Chachi. You're kicking me out already? You have nothing to say. You're asking me. Oh, you have anything you? else to say no, about Black Camp? No, I'm done. I'm done. All right, take your companion cue with you. No. <laughs> Sean, come on up here. It's a residual cue. It's a residual cue? You killed my mood. Um, how you doing, man? Good, and that's a relief. I thought I was going to have to bring my own companion cue, but since I didn't have it. No, one, you can I'm put your five. feet up and everything that's if you sweet. want. There you yeah, go. That's outstanding. There you go. So, Score. Sean Graham, join us. You've been on the show before in past pod camps too. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great to be here. So, uh, what have you uh, attended or have you participated? I don't know if you had a session this morning. So, I sat in on the personal uh, story with Emily Levinson and yeah. then also sat on the SEO evolution. So, I too have some magic pixie dust that yes. I can sprinkle on your soundboard. Excellent. So what's the conversation, what's the conversation been so far? What, what, what's kind of stuck out to you so far? Well, I'd have to agree with, with uh, Demunds. I think that what's interesting is there are so many things out there, it's hard to really figure out how to continue to sustain some of the things. So if mm -hmm. you have interesting content or if you've started, maybe there was somebody that started a blog we ran into two years ago from PodCamp. And so it's, it's um, not just those first few months where you have a new idea or you start a podcast, but it's how do you sustain these things? How do you continue to evolve maybe a year or two ago? Probably a lot of the sessions would talk about how everybody should be on Facebook or Instagram or Instagram or Pinterest. And now I feel like that's continued to evolve and some dust has settled on it. And now it's trying to figure out what makes sense for your audience and um, and, and not necessarily trying to be all things to all people. So trying to find that right mix of content and, and platforms. So awesome. Awesome. Um, cool. Uh, what, what's what's a big kind of tip for the, for the year, you think? Well, I, it was funny when, when Munz was talking about content, I, I do think um, if, you, if you haven't seen any videos on YouTube of Gary Halbert, um, he was uh, big in the direct, he's no longer with us, but he was big in direct mail quite some time ago. Mm -hmm. And I think what's interesting is some of the same stuff he talked about with direct mail applies to this. So, you know, as you think about your content or whatever you're sharing, it doesn't matter how eloquently it's written, but if nobody cares about it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to probably get seen. So I think that that's is is uh, Demons was talking about keeping in mind what you, what your audience is looking for and what types of things are important to them. And and again, even with platforms, it's hard because we sort of settled down. Like with Pinterest and Instagram, things sort of got bananas. And Google Plus maybe slightly more popular than it was uh, maybe a year ago. Yeah, and uh, it's definitely not a threshold, but I think it's getting there. I think it's more focused. I think the conversations there, like personally, I think are more weighted. Yeah. yeah. Well, and they literally might be. We talked about in the other session that there was in August there was a big debate about the correlation between Google Plus Ones and, and uh, SEO Moz had that research out there that said that um, 
the uh, after page authority that the, the number of Google plus ones was uh, the, the second biggest um, factor in where you show up in search visibility and then Google came out and said no that's not the case um, so whether it is or not uh, mm -hmm. I think it is interesting that um, Google isn't going anywhere and it's it's thinking about even if it's not a popular plot as popular as maybe Facebook now are there things that you just need to do to make sense for a business um, so Google plus is an interesting one it, it, it does seem like it, what what uh, you know. Maybe Munz could probably speak more to this too. But it does seem like in order to you know, you're kind of getting blackmailed into Google Plus so that you come up better on Google these days, which works for it. But it is still a powerful tool. I'm afraid to. So uh, I, I don't ever want to go on record of saying anything about Google because I'm, I'm afraid that somehow they, they'll. <laughs> oh, find that's out. right. You had a little bit of a run. Yeah, with yeah. That so, basically. so uh, I'll just put it out there. But uh, I, don't, I don't know how long ago it was, but it might have been after last pod camp and before this one. Um, I went in one day to Google Plus, and my my profile was uh, yeah. suspended. Yeah. And till this day, I have no idea why, and there was no real way that you you and you, you get you have been disappeared by Google. Well, and you get one appeal in, in your life, so they say like you have this one chance to do this, and after that, if you ever have to appeal again, there's no more appeal. So like if you got a suspended, appealed, got restated, and then got suspended again goodbye and then the irony was there's no really there was no way for me to find out because I, yeah. I don't do anything shady like as, as far as i know um you know it's everything i do is uh, like i'm sort of a dork like wasn't there like this idea that maybe you got linked to another site that might have been I have doing no, something weird i have no or? idea and, I, and and then what was funny is I, I i pulled in a favor for somebody that knew somebody at google to try to find out what happened but then the only way i could connect to them was through google plus and because my profile was suspended i couldn't send a message so it was the sweet <laughs> the sweet irony um and then and then it just it just magically got reinstated so i think for me the takeaway from that is so many businesses rely on facebook and twitter and some of these things that are free services for the most part to us mm -hmm. and that also means that you have to think about what access you have to that so if one day that disappears you don't really have any well um, that's and that's one of those things where like i find that like i was having like, another conversation about podcasting about what services do you put your podcast on and so many services that i've been a part of have been disappeared or decided you're not the content that we want smaller things but that's why i that's why i started saying hey video wise i'm going direct towards youtube because youtube's not going to go away you know i do have to fight every once in a while to say hey, they're tagging me in music that i have permission to use you know um, but that's the game you play to be part of that big, big ecosystem. I know they're not going to go away like the three other video services that I've been a part of in the last like three or four years. Well, and, and if you think about it, probably a year or two ago, you had people that would, would you'd go to a session and they'd say, you know what, don't even have a website anymore. Just all you need is Facebook. All you need is this. All you need is that. Yeah. yeah. And, and some people do use Google Plus and they say, this is my blog. Yeah. And, and the challenge again with that is think about all those businesses that was probably two or three years ago that paid uh, designers to create some fancy landing page and that you'd go to this special area on their Facebook page the first time and they'd pay thousands of dollars for that and then Facebook one day said all right we're not doing that anymore yeah and then you just spent thousands because you don't you don't really own it right so, mm -hmm. so I think that's that's been interesting um, speaking of Facebook I, I, I know there was an article out and there's a lot of talk about they, they've made their images larger and I think it, it, uh, Pinterest and Instagram only validated the role of images you mentioned images you, you're putting them in posts um, and, and I think that that's going to continue to be something interesting that for the Social media initially was uh, even Twitter now still pretty much is, is so much it, the visuals weren't there. And, the, and then as you see, like we've been incorporating more and more visuals into them. So I think about thinking about strategically what images do you use and how do you sort of elicit a certain response or create a mood and use images. But I think the statistic was um, with the larger images in Facebook, they're already seeing about 69 percent more clicks on those mm -hmm. associated images. Um, so images matter. So I think that's that's another thing that just as much as you have a content strategy, you need to have an image strategy. So I, yep, it's what I spend a lot of time thinking about. Yep, exactly. And, uh, and these cube things. And so. these cube things, which the mysterious cubes, the PodCamp cubes. It's spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, so, well, we have an audience here, so we, we don't have any questions about like stuff from PodCamp or anything that you guys have seen. Yes. The gentleman in the back. I heard through rumors that you had some material you had printed and there was a way for us to get a hold of it. Could you share with us how we can go ahead and find that? I think you called it an e book. Oh, uh, yeah. So I, I recently wrote um, uh, an e book called The uh, Badass uh, Guide to Small Business Blogging. And so if, if there are any uh, either aspiring bloggers out there or people that have a blog and they're curious to check it out, it's on my website, seangraham.me. And um, I think it's, it's good, you know. And, uh, um, so far, it's got eight uh, five-star reviews on Amazon, I think-ish. So people seem to like it. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Great question. <laughs> Anybody else? We're at it. 
Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, well, thanks, Sean Graham. Uh, where can people find you? At Sean Graham on Twitter and my website, SeanGraham.me. All right. So, yeah, man. All right. I want to pull up some familiar faces. You want to come up? I was here for lunch. That's it. Yeah. Okay. He's on his accordion. He's not allowed. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You, you've you been banned because of your accordion. So, um, actually, you, you want to come up? Yeah, sure. Why not? I know you. You're on. You're in the chat room like every week. All the freaking so time. if you this this is an old friend of mine. You, you might have seen in the chat room WPAJ Juggalo John. Uh, if you guys are on live every Tuesday night seven. I think the only thing I've been on was you know, the one. Yeah, you that, that music show that I had for a minute. Yeah, on the, and then I was actually in one of the Mayhem and shows too, like actually live. The one. It was the two days before 4th of July when the first Transformers movie came out. Because I just remember that because we went to see it afterwards. It's the only reason why I remember it. And, and, and then the music show that lasted like 20 episodes. Yeah. I think you, you had a rant about Lilith Fair that got a lot of... Yeah, which is the reason why I'm on Twitter in the first place, if you remember. So you can defend yourself on your Lilith Fair stance? It was more... It was... Uh, I actually got the one Twitter account just to harass the Lilith Fair's Twitter account because they weren't... <laughs> putting metal bands like female led metal bands or anything like that it was all just the same like mm-hmm. folk music stuff and like, like they, jewel yeah, or, yeah it didn't yeah. really seem like it was a good enough spread for what they had awesome <laughs> so so um how how are you know you, you've been here this morning for a few sessions what, what's your impression of everything oh i like me and my friend uh jamie decided to come up this is the first time i've actually been here but i've watched mm-hmm. every single stream Mm-hmm. for every year going through it and we went to the one it was the social media toolkit which was uh, some stuff. and uh piggyback on what he said is i remember something bernie burns from rooster teeth the one thing he said he goes they always say if somebody's going to do something always make yourself a website because you never know what the trending site is going to be because the joke he keeps using is tila tequila has uh over 10 million friends on uh myspace and what does that got her <laughs> there you go. So yeah, you, know, you, you can't you can't settle into one thing. You can't expect yeah. Facebook to be around. You can't expect Twitter to be around. You gotta always be looking for that next thing. Well, there's Get an in there, and you're like, yeah. what is this? It's it's a social network they bought like years ago. Yeah. And it's huge in Brazil, of all places. Yeah. Like, again, I don't know if that's still a thing, and I think a few other countries, maybe China or something. So I mean, that's like their door in there, you know. So um, yeah. So if you're like multinational trying to sell something like a book or something, you know, you got to keep keep an eye on that stuff. Um, yeah. So you got to keep mobile. That's why I like like being multiple places because like if Google Plus did take over tomorrow, I got to start. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's not completely alien. Crap, I have to learn this thing. Like it's to the point where I heard Gary Vaynerchuk, somebody I follow with social media, you know, thoughts, and he was just like, you need to figure out how to start marketing on Snapchat. I'm like. I'm not showing anybody my penis, you know? I mean, that's your first thought of it, right? Yeah, and it's also the fact of having yourself your own website. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Tashi's going to be on Snapchat. Tashi there you go. Always will. But it's like also having yourself your own, at least your own website. So if for some reason one of those goes down, your fans know where to go to find you. Mm-hmm. To at least say, okay, where's your new, you know, Twitter, new whatever, whatever new social media it is. Yeah. And always have links to those too, but... We actually had something like that happen where um, the insert coin to begin, uh, we talked about it on the show, you know, when it happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the I think the Twitter went down, Chachi, was that right? On insert coin? Oh, yeah, they shut us down. They shut us down because we were trying to cover E3, like, via the streams. We were, we were like, we, have, we got kicked off of YouTube. We got YouTube, off of Twitter. Twitter. All because um, apparently we didn't have permission from EA to do a live tweet of their E3 news conference last year. Yeah, and they, they pulled us and wouldn't tell us why. Ten minutes for them to pull us down off of both channels, and it took three days to get both channels back. Which I still want to know, how do you get away with doing that? Like, pulling somebody down for just reporting on what's showing up. Right. Well, well, I don't get how you that's, can... That's what I told Twitter. The problem yeah. is uh, the automated system is quick to turn you off. Yeah. But yeah, but you got to heal. Yeah. I mean, just like this, it's just like the problem to turn you back on. Yeah, yeah, it's just like the problem with YouTube, and and, and more so, you're getting that the content thing you know, yeah. will grab you, like the problem I'm having. Good friend of our basic sickness is all over our podcast and yeah. productions and teasers. It, whatever service he goes through to register his music, 
uh, which I think is Rumblefish, uh, keeps popping up and tagging the Mayhem Show, for instance, whenever I put a new teaser up. Um, and I go through and I peel and they turn it back on and I can put my ads on there and everything. Um, but at, at last one, and this is weird, because I, at the last one I'm like, hey, is there, so, is there a way I think somebody's going to rob us here in the back? <laughs> 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 he's got he's got a stocking over his head. Where'd you get that? Was that in the uh, that's a bigger Was that in the camp the companion cube or something? Or <laughs> where did you get? I went session hopping. Went session hopping for a minute, and uh, I learned how to make one of these things from my microphone. A pop filter, uh, a pop filter with a with a with a. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's actually that's what we used to do when we when we recorded a rap album. That's what we did. It was it was we just put the stocking over the thing and. Wait, we need more on that. Oh, we'll we'll talk about that later. What's that? The yeah, monkey fling flu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. That one. Um, I have like four tracks on my phone right now. Really? You have four tracks of it on your phone? That's awesome. I have a whole album on my iPhone. <laughs> I still have it. Somebody, dude, I, I get like... I never checked because I loaded all my music up to uh, Google Play. And I wondered if it actually loaded with the song t- titles. It did stuff. on mine. It did yeah, on mine. I have to go Google double Play check. Thing. I never actually paid um, attention. Yeah, I, somehow somebody's streaming it. Like, we're on Spotify, apparently. <laughs> and every once in a while, I'll get like a $5 check and like, all right, from CD Baby, because that's what we sent our CDs in. And then somewhere along the line, they put it everywhere. And I need to look at that because I think there's some questionable content copyright-wise on there. When I looked back, I was like, oh, that doesn't belong to you? Ooh. You know, yeah. so well, one of those things. But I think a lot of it was free to use stuff that he pulled him from. If I, I remember what you're uh, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, somebody I've didn't... heard the backtracks on, like, the openings to... Uh... In the beginning of Nerdist, I Yeah, noticed. in the beginning of like, Nerdist, I'm like, wait, wait that's my... what? What? What yeah. was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was there was a little bit of a miscommunication, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, so we know to do that better next time we decide mm. to do a rap album. Someday, maybe. I still say you got to force Will to do it. Oh, yeah. He, he was the one that, one that I thought could do it the best. We, oh, yeah. We need I, to just hold him down in a room and make him do it. <laughs> we Actually, there's been like a, hey, maybe we should do that again, mm-hmm. you know, uh, kind of discussion in the last couple of months. So. I have once every two and a half months. <laughs> yeah, it's like, man, I wish I could... Record something. I just want to draw everything I'm doing and go do that again. Yeah, yeah. Those were the days. Those were the days. Um, hey, you guys can I network think... better now than you did get when you first started. That's maybe true. you could actually do something with it this we, time around. But we also know how hard that is that maybe we don't want to do that now. So it beats going to like a venue that three people show up and it's like, well, okay, I'll wrap it from the pants, you know. So um, lost complete my complete train of tr- thought here. Um, so I can So so this I'm is having fun. This is the first year I've actually come live mm-hmm. to it. You know, like I said, I'm looking forward to the what it's like uh, NSA and security talk that's going on after. Mm-hmm. It's the next block, and then I'm gonna sit through your Google class one. So I'm looking forward to that. Excellent. We'll see Excellent. Uh, I just wish I would have brought something to take notes with. I didn't even think about about that. You got a phone, right? No, no, <laughs> no. Here, here. Wait, let, me, let, me, let me show you my phone. Because I'm just too cheap to get it. It's this old ass, just flip, crappy. I'm the only human being probably in this building that just uses this to call people. <laughs> I don't actually use a phone for anything no, else. No, you're not the only one. Maybe not here, but I know you're not the only one. Matt Bike on the Mayhem Show, he has one of those. Yeah. And then he just has like an iPad that has a cell chip and he just and an iPod Touch and everything. He's like, oh, I'm good. And I don't have to worry about the data plans and everything. I was like, yeah, it was works. more just never really had the need for it for a while. And now. I don't see dropping the money right now because mm. I have other things I could spend it on, and it, this does the three things I need it for. The rest, free. IPhones the rest would be days. just the rest would be just toys, basically. Mm-hmm. So uh, with that, I, we're going to have to cut this short because we are doing a lot of the other video. We have to make sure everything's going here in the rest of the rooms for the rest of the day. Uh, but uh, any, any final thoughts on podcast? Everything. I know you, though, this is your first time here, so uh, you know it's kind of you know. It's kind of cool. The conversations in between the sessions always seem just as productive as going to the sessions has been our thing in, in the past. Yeah, it seems like talking with you guys and that just mm-hmm. uh, at lunch seemed just fun. Mm-hmm. I think getting just to know people is mm-hmm. pretty good, too. I recommend it. It seems a lot more fun than just sitting on the computer watching it. I know. For you, you're seeing a lot of people that you've seen on Twitter. Yeah. And I know you've interacted with a lot of people around yeah. here. So, actually, you can see them face-to-face. Mm. So, excellent. So, this is Awesome Cast from...
Pod Camp Pittsburgh this week. Um, again, if you guys want to meet us, not this week since we already did the awesome cast. We'll probably replay this or something. Live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday at about 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, all the rest of the podcasts we do there, including Malango with his movie minute. If he's awake back there. Hi. Hi. You do a podcast now. There you go. Um, Mayhem show. Let's play. Hey, he's, he's just starting. He's all right. He's got we got, still got the training wheels on that podcast. Chachi sets the bar high. Chachi sets the bar high. Yeah. Oh, by asking you to know people's names. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a movie show. You should know the actor or actresses' names. And learning how to take critiques on said podcast. Wow. I go for the popcorn and atmosphere, Chachi. <laughs> so thanks for that everybody this is the awesome cast you have been our awesome audience have an awesome week Woo!